I promised I'd be back with more of my thoughts on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth after I had advanced another set of five chapters. Last time, I spoke of the issues I had with the game, primarily the incessant number of tutorials and pointless conversations with Chadley and his wannabe Alexa. I still thoroughly dislike them and skip any and all dialogue with them at every opportunity. I'm really enjoying the story, I love where it's going, I enjoy the character interactions, and I love how Rebirth gives many of the characters plenty of time in the spotlight, such as the expanded Hojo section in Costa del Sol, or seeing how the cloaked wanderers are affected by monsters, or even seeing them join together to form the Genova Rebirth boss on the ship. All those are outstanding, adding a bunch of context to the story being told and the overall mystery the characters are trying to put together. But with that said, with those story and characterization enhancements, I think I finally realized what my main issue is with the game. It's bloat. Square Enix in this remake or reimagining have taken every section of Final Fantasy VII's story and made them five times longer than they used to be, filling them to the brim with, primarily, unskippable minigame sections. Costa del Sol, again, is the perfect example. Did the game need a bunch of faffing about with Cloud? Tifa and Aerith looking for companion tickets to get swimsuits? No, it didn't. It's there to pad the playtime. It serves no purpose in the grand scheme of things, and it's not that fun either. Now, I want to be perfectly clear. My problem is not with the minigames themselves, but the fact you're forced to engage with them. This is why the Yakuza or Like a Dragon series puts a bunch of minigames in your path, but allows you to quit out of most of them. You straight up quit out and continue with the story. But in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you have no choice but to do as they ask. If I didn't enjoy Queen's Blood as much as I do, I would have lost my mind with the whole boat ride on the Shinra 8, because that tournament takes a while and it serves no purpose in the story. Though granted, the Red 13 section in that part of the game makes the entire thing worthwhile. But the part that I truly despised was the Junon Parade. I'm not a fan of the rhythm minigame. As hot as Cloud's dance with Andrea is in Remake, I don't enjoy that bit of gameplay. The camera work on it is something I find truly obnoxious. But that's not the main offender. It's the fact you have to run around the entire place looking for the damn soldiers. And at first, I saw the quest say, look for 10 of them, and I noticed there were about five of them grouped up, so I thought, cool, that's halfway done. Oh, what an optimistic fool I was. No. Each group counts as one. This bit is the definite proof that Square Enix is merely padding out the game with pointless nonsense. Given that if you remove all of it and just leave the core gameplay sections, meaning story and fights, this game will be about a sixth of its length. There's truly nothing redeemable about that bit in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And then to top it all, the Yuffie introduction is another minigame. It couldn't just be push a button for a cutscene after having spent a chunk of time on another big minigame. And again, I have no issues with the minigames themselves, but please space them out a bit. Not everything needs its own mechanic. Some things should just be push a button to continue the story. This is an RPG after all, we're here for the story. And if that isn't enough evidence for you, then the Coral Mines are the best true example of pointless content bloat. It's so unnecessarily long and it's not even compelling. It's annoying to traverse, as the bits where Yuffie can climb are sometimes hard to find, and it's three or four levels of just turning elevators on. In the original, the whole lowering the bridge thing, if you exclude random battles, takes about 30 seconds. Here it's more like 30 minutes. And mind you, this is not an issue with a remake adding stuff on top. I think remakes should be additive, they should add more. But it needs to be something of substance not just content for the sake of content. Both the Resident Evil remake on the GameCube and then PC and the Dead Space remake add stuff, they add content, but it's meaningful. It has substance. It adds to the story. I hated that mine so much that when it came to the next minigame, the minecart, I had completely checked out, didn't really interact with it at all. But as I said, I'm enjoying the story. They're doing some great things with it. I'm really interested in what's going on with Eris' holy materia. It's a white materia, we all know it's holy. But in a cutscene, it's showing as a crystal clear materia for Eris, and its content has been removed. 
and she comments how the whispers which i think is the name for the weird specters that kept showing up in the remake stole something from her and i think it ties to how we're seeing an alternate view of events with zach speaking of zach i really want his sections to be a bit longer it's a bit too breadcrumby a bit too piecemeal for my taste i want some more give me more basically again give me something of substance but if there's one thing they kept identical to Final Fantasy VII in Rebirth that I would have loved for them to change, is the whole thing of Barrett's guilt about Coral and how everybody there treats him like crap. It didn't make sense in the original, it doesn't make sense here. Sure, he pushed for the Mako reactor, he was all for it, but they were all adults and they voted, so the whole thing doesn't make any sense. Not to mention he saved a little kid from a burning building. I was disappointed that when Barrett tells his story to everybody in the group, they don't call him out and say, hey, this is not your fault. Everybody voted. They all share the responsibility. Though I love the degree of insanity they show for dying. Like, he's just fully gone. I mean, he was already gone in Final Fantasy VII in the original, but here, I don't know. He just feels like he's way past the moral event horizon. It could be the voice acting. It could be the voice acting. Then there's the gold saucer. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I'm going to complain about the gold saucer. And I am, but not for what you think. I mean, there is the fact you're forced to do the full tour of the place before you can progress the story, which I don't like. But the gold saucer, be it the original, the one in Rebirth, or the one in Final Fantasy XIV, has always been a mini-game laid in place, and I'm cool with it. I really enjoyed the Star Fox clone game, the Chocobo races, and the bike combat has always been entertaining. My complaint is that the battle arena sucks. The way it's implemented is terrible, and the original was way better. But my issue is not just with the way it's done. It's the fact that the rewards are not interesting. In fact, I find both rewards in the gold saucer to be bland. Just some skill books, some cosmetics, some cards. Nothing really of substance. And I say it's particularly bad for the battle arena because in the original, one of the rewards you could unlock was Cloud's level four limit break Omni Slash. Now that's one hell of a reward. Coral Prison is fairly good. The fight with Palmer in the mech is really fun, but the escape sequence in the buggy is not. And this may be just my opinion, but having to fight Palmer there in the minigame all over again cheapens the previous boss fight. Because you already wrecked that thing before, and now it's back, fully active, no issues with it. What was the point then of fighting it before? Not to mention that the first fight is great with your usual mechanics, and the second one is just this shooting minigame which has awful controls. Not to mention that it's just Barrett shooting constantly, which is not fun. In fact, to me, the dying fight is the worst fight so far, because Barrett's gameplay is just not very entertaining, it's not engaging. I said I love the characters and Ketchy is the best. Love him to bits, he's so emotive, so charismatic, really entertaining and i find it really interesting that while the sub and dub are scottish the japanese performer is speaking in a kansai accent if you've played any of the yakuza like a dragon games it's the same accent that saejima and majima use it's very distinct and yes i said ketchi not kate sith that's not how it's pronounced it's a gaelic name in fact in japanese it's pronounced correctly and it's only mispronounced in the english and yes, I play the game with the Japanese voices. I much prefer those performances. The other absolute joy is Yuffie, of course. Every scene is made instantly better if Yuffie is around. From the Naruto running to her reactions to vehicles to the boundless energy, she's great for comic relief after some of the more intense moments. She is just a delight. For this video, I played up to chapter 9, meaning I got to the Cosmo Canyon region but haven't begun exploring it yet. In fact, I have a lot of side content to get to. After the few mandatory minigame section I kind of mentioned, I just wanted to focus on the main story for a bit and just left everything for later. Don't know how I feel about the new weapons. And by that, I mean the planet weapons. I don't know if they're all meant to replace Diamond, Ultimo, Emerald, and Ruby. I really hope not, because the whale design is not something I really like. Overall, I'm enjoying the bosses, but the Scarlet Mecha fight where she's flying around for three fourths of the fight was a bit annoying. Given that the combat system doesn't really work with flying enemies and your heaviest hitters are grounded. Having said so, the Radiant Ward on the weapon I had just gotten for Aerith, which blocks ranged attacks, was a lifesaver in that battle. I have noticed though that compared to the original, I am going through potions and spells like there's no tomorrow. Though that may be because block and parry don't interrupt animations and dodge doesn't give you iframes. 
so I mostly just attack, 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 and only dodge out of the way of the big attacks. You know, the ones with big windups or that will blow me to pieces. Speaking of spells, there was something bugging me about the combat system for a while, and I finally realized it's the summons. I really don't like how they're implemented, sticking around and needing to use your valuable active time bars to make them do things. I would have preferred for them to just pop out, do their special attack and go away, which is more or less how I use them anyway. My party's ATBs are far too valuable to waste them on Ifrit or Shiva. I have cures to cast. Before I end the video, I have to say one last thing, and it's that though I'm enjoying the story and the characters and all that, it is starting to feel a bit too Kingdom Heartsy. To the point where the mysteries are getting a bit too obtuse and metaphysical, now there are different kinds of whispers, some with the weapons and they're white and good, and some dark and evil with Sephiroth. Not to mention that Sephiroth pops up every five minutes to drop some kind of one-liner and leaving. It's getting a bit annoying and it's getting real Kingdom Heartsy. I mean, there's a bunch of hooded people already. That already is a red flag. That's a Kingdom Hearts red flag. I know granted a lot of them are just Sephiroth clones walking around aimlessly, but if at any point there's an organization made of 13 whispers, I'm calling shenanigans. But that's the road so far with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Next time it'll be the last one, I'll give you my pointed comments and also my overall feel on the game itself. So see you next time.